Hi everybody, Tasha here with another process video, this time using a sketch from Scrapbook Generation. It is part of the free February 2014 sketches from the Create Magazine. You can easily find them on their website. I am going to use, for all of my paper, I do, yes, all of my paper for this layout is from Cartabella's Ahoy There collection. I don't remember exactly when this came out. Maybe, maybe 2014. I'm not 100% sure, but it is a great nautical collection, and I'm actually using it because I'm doing a challenge on a message board I belong to that... You have to look at the new CHA releases that are starting to come in now in the different stores and go to your stash and find something that looks like it that you could easily substitute. One of the new releases that I absolutely adored was My Mind's Eyes new, I can't remember exactly what it's called right now, By the Sea, I think? Loved it, but I got to looking at it a little closer, and it's actually got a lot of elements very similar to this Cartabella Ahoy there. So I'm trying to figure out exactly, it's going to be a two-pager, I know that, obviously, I showed you the sketch earlier, but I can't quite figure out what exactly I want the background paper to be. I tend to use stripes a lot, but I'm not sure if I like this stripe, which I had originally planned on, which is this red and white stripe. It just, it's too, I don't, I don't really want to say harsh, but not quite what I'm looking for. I like for, I like to have stripes in the background, but I like for them to have all of the colors in the collection. And as I feel like that's just a good starting point on how to get everything that I want in there right from the beginning. And it just does not have that. So I know I want this paper, which I absolutely adore. It's also in that. And it is called, I don't remember the names for most of those, but I do have that particular piece called World Traveler. And it has that ombre look from a white to blue. They had it as, technically it went from blue at the top to white at the bottom. And I tried it first white to blue and no they were right it did look really nice with the color on top and it kind of fades almost to nothing there at the bottom there is a slight pattern to it you can't really see it in the picture but it's kind of a wave pattern and so I figure out okay I like that dark I like this background piece that has oh it's got everything on it it's got a compass it's got the little life preservers uh, little seahorses and shells and captain's wheel or helms if you want to call them. Anchors that are in rope. It's got everything in every color and I really liked that for the background. And that blue gradient ombre paper looks really nice but it's just it's a little too light next to light and I am going to figure out how to fix that here in a little bit. And I'm going to go ahead and cut up some of the pieces that I need. I love that dark navy that has a white rope pattern on it. That will be where my photos will be. Uh, kind of putting, laying it out a little bit to see what exactly it's going to look like. And I like this. It's looking really nice. It's just that light blue right next to the white background paper it's not quite what I want and I'll figure out here in just a minute what exactly will work to help me bridge the gap between those but first I'm going to cut up a couple of the oh no not I'm sorry Coming soon, I'm going to cut that cut apart sheet. Okay, here we go. Now I'm cutting the cut apart sheet because I want that one that has a little crab that says let's sail away together because this is these photos are actually from 
a cruise we took in 2014 and this is the sail away party and then that anchor that blue anchor with the red and white stripes I figured that would be a perfect place for my journaling and right across there that will uh, end up being the final layout of my photos I love that and it worked quite well so that red and white stripe paper I really want to use it and I can't quite figure out how to use it and I love the other side of it which has that text so I figure okay I will cut down the red and white stripe and I'll let that bridge the gap between the blue and the white with the all over busy pattern and I love that it works really well but I don't like that it ended in white there at the bottom if I use a stripe I like to make sure that it ends in color if I'm cutting it down. Especially if I'm using it as a matting piece, which is what I'm doing with this one. And I didn't quite cut it correctly. I forgot when you have three sides, there's one side that has to be cut a little different. So <laughs> I did get it eventually. But I cut most of that out and I'm inking all of my edges with Distress Ink in the Hickory Smoke Color, which is just a really dark gray. It's my favorite now. I'll go ahead and start adhering pieces. I've started to adhere I've adhered the blue onto the red and white stripe. And I mean it's the faintest hint of a matte there. But it's just enough to make there be like a pop of difference between that blue and the busy pattern on white. Get that lined up really well. And it's looking good so far. And my dark blue there with the rope pattern for some reason it's just a little short so I'm going to have to fix that later so I'm trying to figure out do I want the striped pieces to go on top of that or do I want to set it next to it like the sketch calls for and I actually like it on top where it just takes a little more of that out so it's just a smaller matting effect with that dark blue and I'm gonna glue all that down. I find it much easier to just use a liquid adhesive. And every liquid adhesive that I use throughout this video is multi matte, or excuse me, multi medium matte. It's my favorite. It holds really well. I don't have to worry about anything coming out the sides. It won't become tacky later. And it dries to a nice matte finish. So it's the one I tend to go for. So when I glued that down, I adhered it all the way to the edges. And I will cut out the middle just a tiny bit with my trimmer once I get all of my photos and things in place. So I inked the edges of my cards and my photos. I'm going to go ahead and start adhering my photos. And I cut a lot of that out because this video was getting really long. I'm going through the Atlantic Collection vellum pieces. That's from Studio Calico. And that is years old. I am not sure how old that is. And I really wanted to use that little frame, but it doesn't end up working. So I do pull out quite a few of the anchors and different obvious, more obvious nautical pieces that worked with my color scheme. And now I am working on the banner portion that's at the top of that sketch. And this is how I finally get to use that text paper that I wanted to use so bad. I made sure I centered up the die just right and used the right size so that I could get the words family vacation and the words summer. <laughs> See, not clearly visible on that text paper. And I'm going to cut out a lot of this because it's just me trying to get all these pieces in place. And I did take a, I had it laid out while I was cutting it and I took a picture of it so that I could refer back and I didn't quite stick to the picture which I never do. I don't know why I take pictures of these things because I always change it. 
but I'm going to start getting those in place. I'm just putting the tiniest little bit of adhesive on there so that I can easily move it if need be. Excuse me for my phone there. And it's very wiggly because the large pieces are not together. So I used an extra piece of paper and adhered that along the back there, which makes it easy for me to go in and adhere everything down a little more securely and keeps it together so that I can easily pick it up to move it and use my trimmer to cut off everything that's overhanging and I get a nice crisp edge. I try it with my scissors at first, but no, that's just not going to work. Just pull up the trimmer, and in about a second, it's cut, and everything is nice and even and straight. And I go ahead and ink the edges. I forgot to ink the edges of all the individual pieces, so I just ink the outside, and that was pretty much good enough. So I tried all kinds of different alphas and to this title. Nothing was quite working for me. So I got these Bella Boulevard Chipboard Alpha from the Sophisticates collection. The colors go really well. It's a navy-ish blue with a turquoise kind of blue polka dot. And those, that four right there doesn't actually make it. That is from Basic Gray's Adrift collection. I loved it, but it's just not quite the right blue, and it's just a little too large. I thought it made the word four a little too prominent. So I grabbed some Lily Bee Alpha stickers. If you know those, they're teeny tiny, very, very skinny letters. And that gave me just the perfect four. And that adventure right there is a die. Which you probably couldn't even make out that it was the word adventure, but it was. And I got tired of messing with the title, so I grabbed that sticker sheet and put down a sticker. That's actually a quote, and it says, Live in the sunshine, swim in the sea, drink the wild air. And it's by Ralph Waldo Emerson. It was just a nice little banner piece that I, banner sticker that I thought perfectly finished off that little row of banners. I'm grabbing another sticker that said family vacation so that that tag now reads let's sail away together family vacation on the back the top of the screen there you see that flag paper the back side of that is navy with some different shapes and sizes of sail, white sailboats and that ad word adventure which is a tim holtz die happens to perfectly fit in between all of those white sailboats so that it looks like i cut a piece from Navy cardstock that just happened to perfectly match all of that. So I cut that adventure piece from some of the scraps four times and then the blue piece on top. So it's five layers thick, which kind of makes it appear like something you got off a thickers sheet. I really like doing that with cards and I haven't really done it with scrapbook pages. I don't think at all yet. And just the right dimension and cause attention to the word adventure for me. I thought it was a nice way to use some of my card making skills on a scrapbook page. So I'm going to start, and that I do not have three hands. I'm not sure if that was my husband or my son. But there's another hand that was there just slightly for a little bit. But So I went and I heared all of my title down and now I'm going to get my printed my journaling which says Nana and Riley danced while Becca sat and watched her first ever sail away. I wish I knew where Jason was during the party maybe getting an ice cream cone. I mean it says Port Canaveral, Florida July 12th, 2014. My husband loves cruising for the ice cream and he is not in any of the pictures from the sail away and I have no idea where he was and he read the 
journaling and said, yeah, that's fair. That's probably where I was. So I picked up that light blue anchor, which matches the anchor on the journaling card. It's a little bit different size. But I put, so put it on some foam adhesive, thinking I was going to use that. I do, but not right there. I'm trying different stickers that don't make it. I did use that blue sticker that says Adventure up there by the small 2x2 two two photo and that awesome vacation oval sticker up by my title. And I put that red Good Times sticker across the light blue anchor. And I use it that way, but it ends up next to the title. And I really want to use some of, of those vellum pieces from the Studio Calico Atlantic collection. And this one that I'm fiddling with, that dark blue arrow, that ends up staying right there. But that other one says, anchors away. And I do end up using it, but it moves all over this page before I find it a home. trying to use some of the anchors. They don't make it, but I try. I try so hard. There's too much blue up there with my title the way it is, and I just haven't figured that out yet. So I'm going to grab some of the chipboard pieces from the Basic Gray Adrift collection, and I like that anchor so much better. It has a banner that wraps around it that says the adventure begins here, perfect for the sail away party of the cruise. And I end up tucking that anchors away up there next to it, and I think that just is a vast improvement over the light blue anchor with good times, which I move up to, you saw me move it up to the left-hand side of my title, and that's a much better place for that. It gives me a pop of red, and I'll add a little more red later. But. So I like those, my mind's eye, anchor enamel shapes. This is from Now and Then, the Milo, I think it's called Now and Then Milo something like that. I wanted to use the blue one, but the silver glittery one just looked a little bit better. So I grabbed that one and put it on that Let's Sell Away Together card, and I used one of the silver glittery geotags down by the location. When we're on vacation, I like to have the location somewhere on my layout, and that's when I typically use geotags next to it. So I use that down there, and use, I get some red enamel dots, because I figure that's just, that's what I'm missing. I'm missing a little more red. So I used a red enamel dot on that blue arrow that under the awesome vacation. And I'm going to use a silver glittery enamel plus sign shape next to that. And that Brad up there next to Awesome Vacation is also from My Mind's Eye. Now and then, I think it's now and then. I could be calling that the, the, the totally wrong thing, and I'm sorry if I am. It's an older collection you probably wouldn't be able to find anyways. But I know it is the Milo part of whatever collection it is. But that brad has a an anchor on it. And now here's a tip. Right there, you see me using that multi-medium mat. If you put a little bit and spread it with your finger to where it's just the thinnest layer, you don't really notice it under vellum. That's one of the best ways that I've found to adhere vellum. But I broke off the prongs to that anchor brad and put it on with a glue dot before I realized 
because I didn't want to poke a hole through. And then I end up putting a couple of rides in other places and I said forget it and just poked the hole through. I should have just did that up top, but I didn't. So I'm getting that good times on that anchor set up next to set sail. And I moved the vellum anchor that I had between set and sail and used one of the shapes. I'm not exactly sure what, if that's a metal shape or what, from Basic Gray Adrifts. It's just a little starfish that kind of looks like a tone-on-tone -tone piece there. And I like that so much better. Getting a couple more enamel dots. And really, this is going to be it, I do believe. I'm going to give you a little bit of close-ups of some of the cluster. Oh, I just don't have one bright in place. And when I do geotags, you saw me do it, and I, I didn't say anything at the time. Um, I actually like to put enamel dots in the middle of the hole of those. I just think it's a fun little way to add an extra pop of color. So I'm going to pull that up so you can see that just a little bit better. I kind of consider my title to be one long embellishment cluster. <laughs> I'm going to show you close-ups of or a still shot of each side, one of the overview of the layout, and thank you so very much for watching. Bye.